Hi, and welcome to this video on home automation. Well, not quite home automation, more like boat automation. My name is Martijn, and when I moved from a house to a boat, I had to rethink what home automation could do and how to choose a suitable solution for on a boat. In this video, I will talk you through that. I hope you enjoy it. All of the devices I discussed in this video were bought by me. I was not sponsored in any way. Hello, welcome aboard our 47 foot sail yard Raven. This is not only our boat, but also our home. We moved aboard uh, this boat about one year ago in 2021. Uh, before that we lived in a house just across the Dutch border with Belgium, in Belgium. And in that house we had all sorts of nice Domotica home automation installed as well. There were four reasons uh, for us to do that actually. First was energy, then there was comfort, then there was safety and lastly also for fun. The home automation that we had in our house was pretty much unsuitable for use on board a boat. And that is because most of the systems that we have on board a boat are very different from the systems that you might have in a house. For instance, with water, we are not connected obviously to the water lines on land. So we have our own water system here. We have a hydrophor and a pump that creates our own water pressure on board this boat. And it takes the water from a 700 liter tank that we have uh, below the floor here. So we are always self-sufficient with regards to water, but it requires that we have power enough. Now as far as power and electricity, we run the boat mainly on 12 volts DC that comes from different battery banks that we have installed throughout the boat. The lights are also controlled from a central panel and are all LEDs. And the gas that we use is from a propane tank that we use for cooking mostly. The heating system that we have is a central heating system as well much like we have in the, in the house, but this one runs on diesel and generates hot air that it uh, flows through the boat via ducts that are also hidden within the furniture and the floor. We do also have 230 volts AC on board in different outlets that we use for instance to charge our computers, but also to watch uh, TV. Uh, so some of the entertainment system is still based on that. And also some of the heaters, the dehumidifier and our electric blanket that we use are using 230 volt. The domotic, or since we're on a boat, I like to call it Navimotic setup, revolves around the central controller. So that's where I started. I chose to go with a Z-Wave setup over here, and there's plenty of information about the choices between Z-Wave or Zigbee or any other protocol that you can find online elsewhere, so I won't go into that any further. So I chose Z-Wave and I started to look for a flexible, customizable solution that would be fit for use on a boat. So at first I experimented with a Raspberry Pi 4 setup and a Z-Wave dongle. It is an inexpensive setup with a lot of flexibility. I got it to work with Home Assistant and I got some of the devices on board connected. And even though it worked at first, I had to reinstall the whole software system at least twice in the first two weeks. So I wasn't too happy about that. It was too much of a hassle. Uh, even though I'm not saying anything bad about Raspberry Pi and the Z-Wave dongle, it might work for some of you, but not for me. It was too much of a hassle, as I said. So in the end, I decided to look for a different solution. So the next setup I tried was the Fibaro Home Center Lite 3. It seemed versatile enough, powerful enough, and it would allow me to control um, exactly what I in mind here in the boat. Maybe less flexible than the Raspberry Pi solution, but certainly less hassle. At least that is what I expected when I started. So I had high hopes it would be more reliable and a little bit less complicated. One other reason I chose for the Home Center Lite 3 of Fibaro is that it runs on 5 volt, which means that it would be easy for me to connect it to the onboard electricity system, which is a 12 volt system. So just converting from 12 volt DC to 5 volt DC is quite easy and very efficient as well compared to having to run a central controller on 230 volt AC as we have here in the Netherlands. One of the reasons that that is important to us is because we're not always here in the marina. So we're not always connected to shore power where we get our supply of 230 volts AC. Sometimes we're at anchor and then we run off our battery system, which is in the back of the boat. Now we can use the inverter to generate 230 volt AC as well, 
but that is less efficient than going from 12 to 5 volts DC directly. The home center light 3 is installed behind this panel. So here you can see where I installed the home center light 3, the Z-Wave controller. And this is the transformer that I used to convert 12 volt to 5 volt DC to give it its power. And the transformer is connected through the main system on the boat, which is 12 volt connected through these panels. The environment on board a boat is very different from a house in the sense that both humidity and temperature fluctuate to a greater extent than it does in a house. Um, it gets colder at night in a boat, mainly because it is in the water, because also most of the windows are single glass and it's not so well insulated at all places in the boat. So there, therefore, due to the temperature differences, there is also a lot of humidity due to condensation. Now this raises some concerns because I do want the equipment that's installed in the boat to withstand those conditions. High, uh, lower temperature, much more humidity and it has to just stay and operate all the time. So I was keeping my fingers crossed for the home center light 3 to survive that harsh environment. And I must say it's been here all winter, uh, which is the harshest season on a boat as you can imagine. And so far it has performed brilliantly. So there's always these temperature fluctuations. We've been sailing, we've been in the marina and the home center light 3 has been running the whole time without any issues. So I'm very happy with that. So I've been able to build the Navimotics, as I call it, eh, the home automation, but then the boat automation system on board our boat. Since then I've used the app to control the, uh, the home center light 3, but also the whole Z-Wave network and done some automation, put in some scenes and installed several different sensors and devices uh, to it. Um, but let's visit those four requirements that I mentioned in the beginning of this film um, that we had for even starting to use the home automation or Navimotics. So the first reason to install home automation was energy. Energy efficiency is even more important than on a house. Not only because of the economics, of course, electricity is expensive also in a marina when we are on shore power or charging our batteries from the shore power, but there are other reasons as well. Our electricity consumption defines how long we can stay on anchor or at sea. We depend on our batteries to have our systems working, that includes the systems that we need to sail the boat, but also lights, refrigeration, heating and our water system. All is based on our batteries that we have in our boat. So the time we can spend at anchor is dictated by the amount of uh, electricity we have in our batteries. So we need to be very efficient with our electricity in order to prolong our being at anchor and enjoying the nature and freedom that we of course desire as sailboat owners. Of course we can always charge our batteries with the alternator from the engine, but that is time consuming and noisy, smelly and not very environmentally friendly. We do not have solar panels or a generator yet. That means that being energy efficient allows us to stay longer at sea or at anchor before our power runs out. Currently our electric system is monitored and controlled by a Victron Serbo GX system, but the home center light uh, monitors and controls the use of electricity by individual appliances such as lights and heating and the electric blanket. Now let's look at the second reason that we install our home automation on board our boat. That is comfort. Let's first start with temperature and humidity. This is our aft cabin. We sleep here and um, underneath here we have an electric blanket. That is just to cope with the humidity and the cold in the winter a little bit better. And um, we programmed the scene that it only stays on for 30 minutes maximum. And we uh, can trigger it either by the Wally controller here on the side of the bed or the remote control, of course the app. Um, and just because it never stays on longer than 30 minutes, that's how I programmed the scene, we can make sure that either it's, it stays safe, but also we conserve the energy and the electric blanket is not left on uh, for more time than absolutely needed. 
At the moment, our heating system on board Raven is not really remote controllable. So instead we use a small electric heater that we place in a room that we want to heat up, for instance the bedroom or the main cabin depending on the time of day. And we control that using one of those wall plugs. Uh, and I chose the Fibaro plugs because it, it measures the energy, uh, which is very important because that heater is actually the biggest consumer of uh, electricity on board. But also uh, the color indicates to me how much of uh, current is actually going through it. The other consequence of living in an environment with bigger temperature differences is humidity. The warm air inside of the boat, specifically in winter, cools down a lot when it hits the windows or the hull of the ship. And that forms condensation. And that humidity is not only bad for your health, but it can also damage your stuff, your belongings, because you can imagine that most of our storage room is actually against the hull. Uh, when uh, mold forms or there's direct uh, water damage at your belongings. So everybody who lives on a boat knows this, a dehumidifier is essential for your comfort uh, on board a boat. The dehumidifier that we use is a 230 volt appliance as well. And we used one of those Fabaro wall plugs to power it. So this way we've been able to find a really good balance between efficiency and power usage. Uh, because the home center light 3 monitors this and we could find out exactly how to keep the boat uh, dehumidified and not spend too much power at the same time. Unfortunately, we've not been able to find a really efficient or good Z-Wave device that monitors humidity. The next part of comfort as a reason to install Navimotics on our boat is the lights. All of the lights we have on board are LEDs. That's because of energy efficiency, but also safety. Because there's less current needed, we can make do with smaller wires and have less of a danger of melting wires or uh, circuits overheating. So also here in the main cabin, they're all LEDs. Unfortunately, it's very difficult to find uh, Z-Wave controllable 12 volt switches. Just a simple on and off would be enough to control these lights, um, because these lights cannot be controlled by a PWM dimmer, unfortunately. We have a fairly spacious main cabin, but some areas are a bit tight and darker. For example, to get from the main cabin to the aft cabin, the back part of the boat where we sleep, there's a little alley past the navigation table that gets really dark. A perfect opportunity for automation. So we have a motion sensor that triggers a Fibaro RGBW2 controllers, which controls a simple 12 volt LED strip. The benefit of using a controller like that is that we can switch the light to red only with just a click of a button. And that is important because when we go night sailing, our eyes have to get used to the darkness outside. And uh, red light, when we use red light outside in the cockpit or down here, um, our eyes do not have to adjust so much between inside and outside and that saves a lot of adjusting time because imagine that you are outside and your eyes are used to looking in the darkness and spotting out things in the water maybe and then going back into a brightly lit cabin your eyes would immediately adjust to the really brightness uh, inside and then if you go back outside it would take about 15 to 20 minutes before you can see in the darkness again um, that is not only annoying but also a safety risk actually. Now let's look at the third reason to install Navimotics on our boat, which is safety. Much like in our house, we like to leave some lights on at night when we are not at the boat. This makes it look like we are there. And of course this is fully automated so that it only does that when there is no daylight outside, just to make sure that we conserve the energy. Also because we have motion sensors to trigger some light scenes, uh, those motion sensors also turn into sensors that let us know if somebody is on board when we are not there. So the HCL3 knows when we are not here. Uh, and then in that period of time, we will get an alert on our telephones to indicate that somebody or something on board is moving. There are a few more security-based safety features on board. Uh, some of them with four paws and big teeth but most of them I will keep to myself in secret because of obvious reasons. When the winter gets really cold, uh, a boat really requires extra attention in order to prevent water systems, engine systems from frost damage. 
Our boat has at least 12 through holes to let water in or out of the boat. You can think about the sinks, the toilet water and cooling water, etc. And all of those through holes have hoses attached to them. And you can imagine that if there's really low temperature and due to frost, one of those hoses cracks open, that when the temperature rises again and the ice melts, we'll be sinking very soon. So monitoring this temperature throughout the boat really also helps us to keep it safe. So with the existing Z-Wave devices I have, I'm able to monitor the temperature throughout the different places on the boat and actually prevent frost damage, as I mentioned. Two of the most dangerous things aboard a ship are fire and gas. And that is because when that happens on board a boat, we need to evacuate. And evacuating from a boat is much more difficult than evacuating from a house in most cases. Uh, we have smaller windows, most of them are not accessible for a human body and uh, we have fewer doors that go actually outside. Now, let's say we can go outside, then we have also the problem of where are we with the boat? It's like if we are here in the marina, it's not a big issue. However, if we are in the middle of the lake, uh, it might be a problem to be found or to actually survive. But it can be even worse. So imagine that we are sailing on the North Sea, maybe 300 miles away from the nearest shore, in 10 degrees water, then we do have a big problem if we need to abandon ship. Now a good skipper is of course prepared for this. Um, the skipper prepares the crew, the boat, for cases of emergency. But best is to prevent that of course. So in this boat we have installed CO detectors and smoke detectors on several places in the boat. And that's because they, they work together and that means that wherever the smoke or the fire or uh, the gas leak is actually located, the whole boat, everybody, everywhere where there's a detector installed, there will be an alarm sounding because of course they all communicate uh, using the Z-Wave network. One of our smoke detectors is installed right here in the aft cabin where we sleep. And that's because just below the floor here are our main battery compartments. So that's where the biggest risk of fire or smoke comes from. Of course, these detectors are not going to prevent the problem, but they will prevent it from spreading or becoming bigger and allow us to react as soon as possible in case of an emergency. One important choice that I made is not to control any of the nautical systems using Z-Wave. All these nautical systems, such as the GPS, the VHF, wind sensor, depth sensor, speed sensors, um, they are all part of their own technical universe connected with NMEA 2000. And maybe in the future I might interface that with the uh, Z-Wave network, but for now I want to keep that as fail safe, simple and uncomplicated as possible because this is really important for our safety. All these systems are required for us to sail the boat safely, to know what's going on. Uh, so I don't want to take any risks with that. The fourth reason for building a home automation system on a boat, a Navimotic system, if you will, was fun. And I must say, it's been a lot of fun to think about what to automate, what not to automate, what choices to make. And so far it's going pretty good. Um, there's plenty of opportunities to improve, which means basically enlarge the system. I'm still looking for a good way to measure humidity, to control the LED lights that we have on board. But so far I've been really happy. Also the performance of the Home Center Light 3 was really good. I've been able to customize it as I want. Building automation using blocks or using uh, Lua scripts has been really a lot of fun. Um, the same with the devices that I've connected, everything stayed connected and is performing really good. So I'm looking forward to the next phases that will be maybe in uh, upcoming videos. If you have any ideas about what could be done on a, on a boat, Navimotics, or have any tips for me, do let me know in the comments and I hope to see you again on the next video. Bye! Thanks for watching this video. If you live on a boat and have some ideas about home automation, please do share them. All tips and questions are welcome in the comments below.